Hello and welcome to this, which is the seventh video that I've put together um, concentrating on this synthesizer behind me, the Behringer Model D. And what I wanted to talk about with this particular video is polyphony, which I know might be uh, a strange subject to talk about given that this is a monophonic synthesizer. But you can uh, polychain multiple units together uh, to be able to play notes polyphonically um, with that lovely analog synth sound. And I only have this one unit um, and I was wondering what it might be like, uh, what the sound might be like um, if I were to invest in multiple Model Ds and polychain them together. Um, so that's the subject of this particular video. I'm going to show you how I attempt to simulate uh, a polychained uh, setup just using one um, synthesizer um, and give you a feel uh, and myself uh, a feel for what the sound is like um, and what my conclusions are. So that's the subject of this video. Hope you enjoy it. Okay, so the process that I'm going to talk you through and demonstrate to you is actually not specific to this synthesizer at all. Uh, you could apply it equally to any other monophonic synthesizer uh, or other monophonic sound generating device. It's not specific to this Behringer, so I just wanted to say that up front. Now, with the Model D, like most equipment that's, uh, that's manufactured these days, the primary way that you're going to connect it to your other uh, equipment is using a MIDI cable. Um, standard MIDI cable allows, allows you to hook up uh, the Model D to your keyboard that's generating MIDI data or to a MIDI sequencer or hook it up to your computer where you're running a door that will be communicating with um, the synthesizer. So that's the, the, the way that most people will end up hooking up their Model Ds to other equipment uh, and I'll show you um, a process for simulating uh, poly polyphony using uh, the MIDI cable. Um, it's a very tedious, laborious, painful process. Um, it's not particularly creative, um, but I'll show it to you. And then afterwards, I'll show you an alternative approach um, that I've come up with, um, which is much, much better. So we'll start off with the MIDI interface approach. Okay, so uh, here I am in Cubase and I have got three audio tracks um, set up here. I'm just going to uh, create a three note chord. Um, and uh, I've got a MIDI track here and it's just playing, it's just got one note in it, which you can see down the bottom here. It's a C, so I'm gonna play a C major chord. And the first thing I need to do is just push this uh, one single note to the Model D um, and record the audio that I get back and then choose the next note and then the next note. So that's the process that we're going to follow through. Um, so I'm going to uh, record the first audio for this C note, um, which I'm just going to quickly do like this and record. Now I've got a little bit of reverb so it, uh, it doesn't sound uh, terrible. Um, and there is the waveform. Okay, so that's the C. So now I then go and um, go into the MIDI editor um, and either move it up or I can just transpose it. So now I want an E, which is one, two, three, four semitones up. So I will transpose up to four semitones and I will now record the next um, audio track. Okay, so we've now got a C and an E. And then I will go back to the MIDI editor and I now need a G, which is one, two, three semitones up. Oops. And transpose it up and now record the third audio track. So there we go. 
Um, so now if I just disable the MIDI so we don't keep sending note data to the synth and I just play these three together it's a nice sound but if I want to really simulate uh, a polyphonic chord stabby chord like this what I should really be doing in between recording each of these notes is to just tweak some of the controls on the Behringer Model D, maybe just tiny little tweak of the master tune or the detune between the oscillators or the loudness or the filter cutoff or something. Because at the end of the day, if I'm going to polychain three units together, they're not going to be generating the exact same sound uh, as far as I can to the human ear I can try and get them to be the same but they're not going to be the same and that's part of the uh, interest in polychaining three analog synths together or, or, or however many you want to do is that you will get uh, a variation from note to note and therefore you're going to get this lovely sort of like warm um, textures to the sound so uh, that's what I really should be doing uh, in between each of these um, recordings is to make some very slight adjustments and at the end of the day all I've got here now is one single chord. Uh, if I want to try and do this on a longer piece, a bit more of a musical piece, something where I can actually really sort of like play it back and listen to it and think oh that sounds good, uh, this is a really laborious way of um, going about uh, uh, creating um, a polyphonic uh, version of this particular uh, chord. Um, so that then brings me on to showing you a an, an alternative way of doing it, which actually doesn't use MIDI um, to talk to the Model D. So that's what I'm going to show you next. Okay, so the uh, second method I'm going to show you of uh, simulating polyphony with the Model D actually requires uh, an extra piece of equipment, which is uh, this particular uh, Eurorack uh, unit that I've got here in my Eurorack case. Uh, this one is by a company called Mutable Instruments. They're a fantastic company. They make really fantastic products um, and it's called Yarns. But there are lots of these out there. There's lots of different ones out there. This specific uh, unit has a huge amount of functionality, which I'm not going to go into here because it's not relevant to this video. Um, but at a very basic level, it will take a MIDI input through a standard socket here and it'll generate CV and gate which you can then um, use in your Eurorack gear to uh, control the pitch and uh, envelopes and, and actually be an alternative to a MIDI interface which I know that the Model D has. Now this specific um, MIDI to CV converter as you'll see here has got four pairs of CV and gate outputs um, and it does something really rather cool which is that it um, supports polyphony up to four note polyphony. So what that means is if I have a MIDI um, cable in here and I hold down four notes on my keyboard um, it will identify those four notes and it will output pairs of CV and gate uh, voltages to uh, each of these outputs, which means if I had enough Eurorack gear, enough oscillators and filters and envelopes, I could actually build a, a four note polyphonic analog synthesizer. Now what I'm going to do um, is to use this module to control the Model D, because as well as taking in MIDI, it will also, because it's semi-modular, it will accept CV and gate inputs. The CV input for pitch is over here, one volt per octave, which is the standard Eurorack. Um, and there are two gates. There's a gate for the filter contour here, and there's another gate for the loudness contour, the amplitude envelope here. So in order to connect this thing up to the Model D, what I need to do is first of all, take the CV out and it in, patch it into the 
one volt per octave input. And then I need to take the gate and I need to patch it into these two locations. Um, and the way I'm going to do that is, one is, is with one of these stackable um, mult uh, patch cables. So if I take the gate output from here and put it into one of them, then that, what I can then do is with the second cable is to sort of daisy chain from there into the other one. So the CV output is patched into uh, the Model D CV input and the gate output is patched into both of the Model D's uh, gate inputs. So this allows me then to um, put a MIDI cable in here. If I play one note at a time, then I can trigger the Model D exactly the same as if I put a MIDI a cable directly into the Model D itself. Um, but I'm now going to show you uh, how the uh, Mutable Instruments yarns um, how it responds to polyphonic uh, notes um, and then you'll see where I'm going with this particular um, piece of equipment. Okay so I just want to uh, very quickly demonstrate how um, this uh, YARN's MIDI to CV interface works in polyphonic mode. So I've just temporarily hooked up an Arturo key step um, to it via this MIDI cable that you can see here. Um, so I've gone into what's called the layouts uh, menu in Yarns and I've set it to 4P, which is four note polyphonic mode. There's a whole bunch of other modes. I'm not gonna go into them now, but that's what it's set up to do right now. So with that in mind, if I hold down a key, you'll see that one of the uh, CV and gate combinations, one out of the four has been chosen. Ha happens to have chosen the, the, the first one, um, but it could have chosen any of them. I hold down a different note, uh, a different one. Now it's chosen the fourth combination and then the third. Um, I don't know what the algorithm is specifically inside it as to how it chooses uh, which ones to use, but uh, it's predictable and it is most importantly repeatable. So if I hold down that same key that I started off with, it's going to go back and use the same CV gate combination. Same CV gate combination, same and same. What this means for me is that if in my door I record a whole uh, sequence of MIDI notes of chords and arpeggios and stuff like that, um, I can play them back through the MIDI cable into the yarns and it will choose CV gate options for each of the notes in that sequence and it'll choose the same ones each time. Um, which means that I can first of all hook up the Model D to the first pair of CV gate outputs, play my sequence all the way through, record what this plays, which is going to be you know pretty much one in four notes, record it, uh, reconnect to the second pair of outputs, uh, play the sequence all through again, record the output, same for the third, same for the fourth. So by doing four passes through my whole uh, musical sequence of MIDI data, um, I get four audio files out, which I can then uh, stack on top of each other and listen to all together. And it will be a polyphonic uh, recreation of my music sequence. Clearly, as I said before, uh, each time I record one of these combinations, I should then tweak some of the, uh, the settings very, very slightly on the synth so that I'm making sure that the sound isn't identical from one CV gate combination to the next. But um, that's basically what I'm going to quickly show you now as a demonstration as to how um, I recreate uh, or simulate polyphonic mode on the Model D using this particular uh, fantastic little unit. Okay, so here I have in Cubase um, a little uh, selection of sequences set up here. Um, I recorded them with uh, a polyphonic sound source. Um, I use my controller keyboard, it's got a piano sounds. Um, so I'll just play them 
um, so you can just hear what they, they, they sound like uh, before I start recording the Model D. Um, as you can see, there's just a few little arpeggios and then some chords at the end. So if I just play them very quickly, they just sound like this. Okay, so nothing there particularly exciting, I have to say. So I'm now going to reroute these MIDI um, tracks to the um, to make sure they come through to the yarns, the cable that's plugged into the yarns, uh, like that. Uh, and now I've got four audio tracks set up, which I'm going to record one after the other. So I'm going to start off, as you can see here, with the first pair of CV gate outputs from the ARNs, which is connected up to the Model D. And I'm going to just turn off loop and just record the first audio track. It won't sound fantastic because it's going to be playing one in every four notes. Okay, let's move down to the second track. Let's move CV and gate down to the second pair. I'm going to make just very slight, tiny adjustments to some of these controls, just to sort of try and simulate that I've got a different Model D with the slightly different settings. Um, and then I'm going to press record again. Pick up my tune. Okay, I was a bit heavy handed with the detune there, but you get the idea. Then we move down to the third set of outputs, third audio channel. Let's see if I can rectify I don't know what really what I'm doing without playing it back and listening to it. I'm just doing this in a hurried way. Okay. And finally, the fourth set of outputs. Okay, so now it's done. Um, I'm going to mute the MIDI channels and loop it, and just let's listen to what it sounds like. I was a little bit heavy handed with the uh, detuning, I have to say. So it's probably not going to sound fantastic, but it's going to be original. <laughs>
So that is what the Model D would sound like if I'd had four of them and I have just played that sequence through to all four um, polychain together. Uh, so that's an alternative way to do it, uh, a much cheaper way to do it, just with uh, one Model D um, and this little yarns unit, or there are plenty of other ones out there on the market that are MIDI to CV converters that can handle uh, some level of polyphony. So this is not the only one out there. This is a really, really cool um, little unit, I have to say, but uh, it's not the only one out there. And as I said originally, this uh, process um, is uh, can be equally uh, used on uh, other mono synths, uh, anything that can take CV and gate inputs uh, like the Model D can. Um, and uh, what I like about this process is that I can put together um, the MIDI sequences in my door uh, playing uh, just any old polyphonic instrument, whether it's a piano or whether it's some sample library, whatever it is, I can sort of like be creative about it, put it together, and then once I've got those those MIDI notes uh, recorded, I can then just with four passes through it um, record uh, what it would sound like uh, if I had four Model Ds uh, all stacked on, on top of each other. Um, so, so that's it. I did take those sequences that I uh, that I've got here in Cubase, um, and earlier without such heavy-handed detuning. Um, I recorded uh, the four uh, sets of audio and what I've done with them is I've just slightly uh, panned those four um, different audio channels across the stereo field so that individual notes play at different offsets uh, left and right of centre. Um, and I put together a very very quick little uh, less than two minute um, song uh, with those sounds in it. So that's what I'm going to play to you next. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.